good evening everyone uh, it's a beautiful day isn't it uh, we've got with uh, us ms pakshi shah all the way from canada before uh, we commence anything else uh, i would like to request everyone to just start the cameras and uh, participate more and more uh, so it is actually good for us as well right yeah yeah that's beautiful all right we have with us uh, ms hitakshi shah all the way from canada she is a, she is a advertising specialist in atrium digital in canada it is one of the best uh, digital marketing agency in canada uh, she has done multiple courses uh, did bba from uh, baroda navrachna university then uh, completed her education in canada and having done marketing management she has completed a digital marketing course from brandweda itself and there she started her journey she embarked embarked her journey uh, and it's been 5 5 years since then that she has been doing this and having learned a lot uh, in uh, through this course as well as practical uh, experiences she is now the master of paid advertising and is working as i said before i with atrium digital with 20 years of experience the com the company has been working with many many different industry clients and she is still gaining a, a lot of knowledge and idea about digital marketing the stage is open for you hitakshi thank you so much navan thank you so much uh well hi everyone i think it's uh, evening over there so good evening <laughs> you guys it's morning for me uh well thank you for this you know really good introduction uh as he said my name is atakshi you know as you guys i'm i'm also from baroda i did my education over there uh i did just a you know basic uh, bba course which i wanted to do because of the marketing purpose uh at that time that was 2014 at that time i did not know uh you know what exactly i want to do i did not know anything about digital marketing but i just went into marketing side just to see and learn what could be you know what 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 are the opportunities and what are the things that i can uh explore and so therefore you know from 2014 i completed my bba and then just saw that there is this digital marketing institute you have no idea how much search i have done to find a good digital marketing uh, college or university in india itself because at that time i don't know if it is the same thing today but there were no government affiliated course for digital marketing so just to learn the basics i think i started doing digital marketing from brandweda and that's i think that's where everything started um but after that you know i got some hospitality uh, experience in digital marketing within uh, in in india itself for like you know a few months but then i moved here to canada and i wanted to learn more about digital marketing but again there are not a lot of major university that would give any course for digital marketing or particularly for google ads so i started doing marketing management as my course and you know then moved to another course which was social media marketing but one thing i made sure is everything on is on track everything goes towards something which i really want to learn and uh, that's where i got to know that okay digital marketing is not just one particular thing it includes a lot of different aspects it has google ads it has social it has content writing it has graphic designing it has web development could be part of it uh it has seo so you know once you have knowledge of each and everything a little bit you get the sense out of it you get to know okay maybe i i'm a good writer i i i think i can write a blog i think i can write a new write a news letter or something i could learn content writing but then you think that okay this is not working out i think i'm good on social media handling influencers or having social media ads i think i want to explore more on social media side so you can do that and then there is google ads then there is seo so i think digital marketing is one of those field that gives you multiple option to choose from uh 
uh, you don't have to stay stuck with one thing. You have a lot of different options which are related to digital marketing. So that's what you know. I I tried my focus to do on. Uh, I had a lot of certifications that I did from Google itself. It's just because. this industry is not about something same thing that we learn it keeps on evolving it keeps on changing you all know that google keeps on updating uh, the algorithms there are facebook announcement there is tiktok announcement there is instagram announcement there are so many things that keeps on evolving some day you know there will be a ban on certain apps some day there will be another app so you just have to keep on moving forward with the industry as as you keep on learning and that's the key about digital marketing you should you know i i always had this willingness to learn about new things i always had the willingness to uh do some certification just give some exams online you have plenty of options like you have who sweet uh, certification you have linkedin certification there is twitter certification nowadays and a lot of them are free so you you're not paying anything and you're learning how to do ads you're learning how to do a post online like organically and i think that's that's really important because you you must keep learning in that same direction that you want to go and that's what i wanted to do and that's what i did and you know 5 years later i can see myself having glimpses of knowledge from all the different options that we get from digital marketing and i know that i i really like doing google ads that's that's you know not just google ads it's just overall paid ads on any platform so what basically i do is my specialization is in ppc and in you know social media ads any sort of uh, ads that are paid uh, so that's what i i i work in and uh, that's what i'm learning so yeah it's it's been quite quite a journey i would say uh, you know learning about I, i was doing a course on social media marketing and i'm like i know how to post on instagram i know how to post on facebook but that's not the point the point is it's not just about posting if you're doing social media marketing not just the paid ad side just the organic side you got to know what the client want you need to know what if your audience is there so uh when it comes to social media per se the major you know difference comes up if you want to explain it to any company owner or you know your client or yourself as well uh you be like should i be just doing social media like organically should i put some ads in social media well it depends it depends on what you want uh what the objective is so let's say your objective is just brand awareness you just want to create your identity on social media you don't need to run ads if you can be consistent with your content if you can post like three days a week or four days a week giving some time in between to the audience to react you want to build that community you want to build that interaction you want to be present in front of them you keep on posting random stories on the clients uh you know if if it's a restaurant let's say and you just want to bring awareness of the restaurant you keep on posting some good pictures of the dishes you keep on posting some good stories about the restaurant you know that's the brand awareness objective you don't want to run ads on that but let's say there is an event in the same restaurant and you want to promote that and there is a there's a gathering or you know you give these kind of major events that uh, happens in the same restaurant you want to promote that that's when you bring the ad side because you want to reach to the audience that you have and to the more audience that you want to target so once you understand that okay this is my objective and this is how i want to go then it makes it more clear that's what i call it a you know strategy phase because strategy phase is like your foundation you ask a question to your clients you ask you know you ask question to yourself be like i want to do ads for that restaurant but should i be doing it on facebook you know that's 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 a myth that you know you have to do ads on facebook and instagram at the same time it's not that if my audience is not on facebook why would i be spending money there because you would know what your audience are you know talking to the client you can be like hey i just want to know uh, what what's the customer you're looking for 
you know, if they're like the young millennials, uh, if, if it's like, you know, uh, people who are following in, uh, influencers or who are always updated, you don't want to just stick to Instagram. You also want to try something new. You can do something else. You can put another platform, uh, you know, into perspective. But if you say your, your audience is like, you know, uh, people between 35 to 55 year old, you want to do ads on Facebook. You know that our, you know, at, at that age group will be there on Facebook. So that has been more, most important. There are a lot of questions. You want to know why you want to do ads. You want to know why you want to do marketing. You want to know which platform you want to use. So if you have a good strategy, I think, Anyone can come, anyone should come up with the idea. I think it's all about brainstorming. It's about talking. I think more you ask the questions, more you get the answers, you'll get the more clarity. You'll be like, oh, I was thinking about this idea, but looking at what you just said, I think that's that's garbage. <laughs> you know, it's 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 not, we cannot implement that. It's just a waste of money. I think we should come up with this because this is more approachable. Uh, that's about social media, I think. So I have been doing social media ads, particularly uh, on Facebook. I do ads on Instagram. I have ads on Pinterest. I have some ads on TikTok uh, because uh, a lot of clients in this side, like the North American side, they want to they wanna come up on TikTok because it's a huge audience. They have a huge target audience over here for TikTok. Uh, also for Pinterest. I do ads on YouTube and uh, obviously the ads on PPC side. Uh, I think first I just want to cover something about social media because that's, you know, that catches your interest uh, and then I'll move on the PPC side. So social media, I would say, uh, as I said, for the objective, you should know what objective you have and then you should know the audience that you have. Uh, coming back to Pinterest side, now I know that North American industry have a huge audience, female audience particularly on Pinterest. So if I want to do, I, I'm, a, I'm a showroom of home decor, I want to target some audience which is female, which is because it's a female oriented, or let's say, I'm just going to give you an example because I, I do an ads for a jewelry company. So now jewelry company, this one is a big one because they do engagement rings, wedding rings, and usually females are the one who would go on Pinterest to look for, oh, wedding ideas, like the wedding decor ideas. I want to see wedding venue decorations, or I want to see wedding dress. Uh, I want to see, you know, a lot of wedding related stuff. They want to go and find it on Pinterest because, you know, Pinterest has a lot plenty of options that you come up with so I I know my audience is on Pinterest so I want to go on Pinterest and do ads so that it comes in front of them and I see that oh people in relationship or uh, people who are looking into women clothing or women jewelry I want to target them so Pinterest gives you a lot of options it's just like Facebook I would say but Facebook is getting very restricted with the kind of targeting that we do because of the iOS update. But with Pinterest, you have a huge number of audience. So you want to keep a large audience. I try to keep minimum of 3 million of target audience in any of my campaign. So uh, I think Pinterest has a lot of things. If I know my audience is on Pinterest, I really want to do ads on Pinterest. Same for, uh, you know, Instagram. Now I do ads on Facebook and sometimes under the placement, I remove Instagram because I don't want to spend money over there. I don't want to show my stories in Instagram as an ad. I want to keep it just for Facebook. So I do ads for like the elevator companies. Uh, now they know their target audience is on Facebook and is on LinkedIn because of the B2B business. So when you're doing B2B business, you don't want to be glamming up the company on Instagram. You want to glam up the company on LinkedIn in a very professional way. Uh, 
in you know north american industry i think a lot of uh, clients who are industrial who are into b2b they do ads on linkedin and doing ads on linkedin it's not complicated i think doing ads anywhere it's not complicated it's it's just the basic idea you should know what your target audience is you should know what the objective you should know the budget that you want you should have the strategy of okay this is the campaign i want to split the campaign like that and you know once you design the whole campaign you can put it up on different platforms now for linkedin whenever i do ads on linkedin i want to keep it professional i don't want the graphics to be bright colors i don't want a lot of information in the graphic itself i just want to put some minimum carousel you know just few few say, statements and just another another graphic with few statements and then i want them to fill up a form so that i can generate leads on uh, linkedin that's how i can calculate i can uh, i can measure my results on linkedin because i don't want just them to click the ads i want them to fill up a form because they are business they are the industrial businesses they are the corporate business so their information is really valuable to me people could be doing sales call to them you know because i let's say i am the elevator company i am getting the list of you know people and they filled up the form that means they are my potential customers so my, i will be telling my sales team that okay we have the list of potential customer here it is give them the sales call and that's how you know i can link up my major objective for using linkedin and i can convert the lead into you know customers that was for linkedin uh for tiktok now i know we don't have tiktok in you know in india but then just want to give you a glimpse because i know a lot of people were wondering how a uh, canadian market is because they want to come here and study more of digital marketing so it's really important to for you to know uh the entire north american industry a lot of people are active on tiktok since covid that number has gone up because people people just want to have some entertainment right so they want to they, they are there a lot of young people a lot of young crowd is there but now a lot of a lot of like 30s and 45 year olds are coming there as well because they see the video on facebook and they're like oh there is a good video and they click and they're redirected to tiktok so they 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 want to be on tiktok they just want to scroll because tiktok is not for networking tiktok is just you see something you keep on scrolling the kind of algorithm that works in tiktok is really different it's not something like facebook or instagram it's 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 most it's mostly one way communication because people are not going to interact that much with the video so uh, if supposedly i'm doing ads on tiktok my main objective is i don't want the customer to think i don't want anyone to think that this is an ad if i'm watching tiktok videos and i come across a video i'll watch it i don't realize it's an ad because it's it doesn't say you know in the in a big statement it doesn't say that it's an ad it just says in the bottom that it's an ad it's sponsored so i don't because it will change the content people will just scroll it up they don't want to see it but if i keep it fun if i keep you know the trending music i add some dance moves i add some uh, trends that's going on and i make an ad out of it 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 it's it's never supposed to be an ad it's just supposed to be a tiktok video just promoting your 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 product or services that's the main idea so when you whenever we do ads on tiktok it's more about the creativity that you bring up it's it's more about how can you reach out you can reach out to the audience if you're doing ads you're paying the platform so you know that you have a wide audience and you are going to reach out to them but that's not just the objective you you remember as i said brand awareness could be done by organic but my objective is to get clicks to to get my leads to get you know good views so i would want to keep uh, you know something creative on tiktok side and just want to see how that goes on down tiktok you can also do ab testing 
because you don't know if the video is going to work. Uh, A-B testing could also be done on Pinterest. So, <clears throat> so let's say you're creating some boards on Pinterest under the ad section, and you're not sure if that will work. So you can do an A-B testing just to see which one works. Now for Pinterest, you can use creatives like Instagram because it's more of engagement. You wanna, you wanna showcase the product. So you wanna keep the product on a bigger scale and you wanna keep less content. You don't have people reading the app ads. You have people seeing the ads, like they see the product and they're like, wow. So I, I see a lot of uh, new, new car models ads. Uh, so I don't wanna read about it. I just wanna see the car because it's, you know, it's attractive it's attractive and I see a car and I'm like, okay, which model is it? And then it, it, it takes my attention and then I want to read about it. Same like, you know, jewelry. I, I do ads for the jewelry and I want to keep the ring picture as the main picture. And I will write in the content and she said, yes, you know, something like that. So I want to, I want to take the attention from them on Pinterest, on TikTok. And, uh, when I do ads on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, Facebook stories and Instagram stories, uh, I want to put some information about the product, about the services as well. And always, always try to put some call to action because what's, what's the use? Like, what are they going to do? If they see the ad, what's the action? They have to click it. They have to be redirected somewhere. They should either go to the website if you want to just increase the traffic from social. Uh, if you want them to fill up a form, you can do that. If you want them to make a purchase, you can do that. It's an e-commerce website, let's say, and you have some offers coming up, like 10% off, 20% off, and they see this amazing ad with less information, with amazing products, the pictures are really good, the content is really good. If they click, they should go on the website page, on the landing page, where they see the, uh, uh, you know, the product and they can really add to God and they're done. So that, you know, that is how you target them in their buyer's journey. So everyone knows about buyer's journey, right? They, they get to know about something, they hear about something, they think about it, they make this decision, and then they make the purchase. You want to make sure you know what point in the buyer's journey you want to target. So I always do two kind of ads on, uh, let's say, on LinkedIn's. I do top of funnel and bottom of funnel ads. So my top of funnel ads are always, always brand awareness ads because, and always will have a call to action because I just don't want brand awareness. I also want them to click on it. But if a client doesn't have any presence on LinkedIn and LinkedIn is the primary platform for them, you know it. So what do you want to do? You cannot just keep on posting like Instagram right? You can get the organic thing, but you also want the leads. So I create a top of funnel campaign, which will just be focused on brand awareness. The creatives will be different, not the theme of the creative. I always keep it consistent with the, with the image of the brand and, you know, with the, with the type of words that they use to explain their products. So the top of funnel uh, ads on LinkedIn are majorly for the brand awareness. I keep my audience broad. I, I want to have a, a larger radius of my target location. I want to I wanna include a lot of things, not the unnecessary stuff. If, if I think that this, this interest person is not required, I will not add. So that is just the top of funnel. And then the bottom of funnel ads. Bottom of funnel is mostly sales oriented ads that I do. That campaign is basically just for getting them to make a sale, to make a purchase or to become our potential customer. And that's how I create the strategy that because I know that LinkedIn is a different platform, it has a different perspective altogether, unlike Instagram or Facebook. So top of funnel and you know bottom of funnels are the two type of campaigns that gives you a better idea. You don't have to do it necessarily. I am recently doing ads and I don't want to do bottom of funnel 
as of now because they're just starting on LinkedIn. I know they're not going to create sales. I first want to have a lot of audience. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I think I want to, you know, talk about the PPC side because there's some connection to it. So when I do PPC ads, let's say we are doing search and display. The client is saying, okay, I want to do display and I want to also do search. They are just starting to do it. And when they just start to do it, they don't have a lot of audience. They're, the website is new. Uh, they have money, but they don't have audience. What's the point of doing remarketing? Then? What's the point of doing display remarketing? So if I'm doing, if they say that I want to do PPC, I want to do Google Ads. This is my website. It's pretty new. IT people have worked really good on it. And it's really strong. You start doing search and you start doing display remarketing. Who are you going to remarket? Who are you going to target? Nobody. You want to create that audience first. So I always spend like three to four months. I, I let them know. You can always let your client know that, listen, this is not a good strategy for you. Right now, let's focus on search side for a few months. Once we have audience, like a good amount of audience, because we are sending everyone to your website, there is no form submission. There is no, uh, you know, it's not an e-commerce. There's no purchase. We're just sending them to the website. After three to four months, we start doing remarketing. And boom, we have a lot of audience already going. We are already targeting that big amount of audience. So <clears throat> that's when your strategy will be successful. And now a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> I think this is something which I face commonly. Uh, clients, big clients or medium scale clients, they will have money. They'll have everything settled down and they wanna do digital marketing. But do they really want digital marketing? That's a question. I mean, why do you want digital marketing? Why do you want to do Google ads? Or why do you want to do social media ads? You have to ask these questions. They're like, uh, I don't know. Maybe everyone, everyone is doing, right? So I should be doing too. Like, is your audience there? Is your audience there on Facebook, Instagram? They're like, I don't think so. They're mostly industrial people. They're not using Instagram. Uh, they're not using Facebook. Like, why do you want to put money in them? <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> and then again, like, uh, they, they don't think of LinkedIn as, you know, that it doesn't come, it doesn't click, oh, I want to do ads on LinkedIn. And I'm like, your, your audience is there and you're going in an opposite direction. You, I know you have a lot of money, but do you want to waste it? <laughs> right. So that's because it's 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 very general thing. It's uh it's not something surprising. Oh, how does they don't even know that you know their audience is not? They might not know. It's fine. Uh, digital marketing could be complicated for people who don't realize it. But we, as a specialist, we know what we're doing. So it becomes our job to explain them in, in their language. Be like, okay, I, I don't want to use terms like clicks and you know CPC. I don't want to say I have this conversion value and uh, there is this bounce rate. They don't know what you're talking. It's all a different language that goes on in their head. They don't know. You have to talk in their language. Every three months, you know, every time I do a report, every time I'm telling my client that, okay, I did this campaign for three months, this is the result. Now they can see my report says CPC, they have uh, you know clicks per conversion, they have uh, ROAS and they're like, they're just blank. So I don't tell them that, oh, this, this time you got 3% uh, uh, CTR. Like what is CTR? So I have to be like, so for this three months, I, I did your ads and you've got 10,000 people who saw your ads. That's the impression. I don't want to say impression. These are like 10,000 people who saw your ads. Out of those 10,000, there were 900 people who clicked on those ads. So those are the clicks. And the average of those people is the percentage that you get is CTR. 
right? And there is a benchmark of every industry in terms of CTR and CPC. You should always keep that updated. Uh, you should always be checking once you start dealing with different industrial clients, uh, you can just simply Google like the industrial benchmark for CTR 2020 and you'll see a list. You'll see uh, which industry has a benchmark of what. So I see, I see click to rate of real estate, let's say it's a 2% uh, and my client is standing at 2.7% CTR, which is boom, it's good for you you are above the average of you know industrial benchmark and that's what i tell them that technically this is the benchmark of your industry and look at the numbers that you're getting you're getting 3% ctr whereas the benchmark is 2% so you're doing above that and then you know i talk, i talk about the cost that they have spent and i know why the cost goes up and up it, it, it's all the reasoning that I have. I know it. I know if I'm targeting uh, audience in US or I'm targeting different locations or I'm targeting something else or I'm doing using keywords which are like uh, expensive. If you say, you know, I know the reasons. So I just have to tell them that, you know, this time there was not a lot of search. So what Google did, Google tried to push your ads more and more and more so that whosoever is looking will find it. And that cost a lot wow. because there was not a lot of search, but Google was trying to push because you have a daily budget. So that leads to a lot of, you know, the cost will be like, oh, why did I spend $10,000 in three months? Like, because there was not a lot of search. You know, and they're like, if I spent 10,000, why were there less impression? So you also see the market trend in the industry, even if, you know, if it's, it's in India or it's here, anywhere in the world, if you're doing ads, you always see the market trend. A lot of, uh, you know, products and services are based on season. So if, if there is like uh, <clears throat> a client who does snow removal for us, uh, I don't want to do ads for them in summer. I know people are not going to look for snow removal. So it, it's no point. It's could, it could be their primary product. It could be their primary service, but it's no point. People are not going to search for snow removal services. They want to do, you know, uh, plant trees. They want to do gardening and they have gardening products and, you know, garden mix like soil. They have some decorative rocks. Uh, uh, they have some construction that you can do. They can sell concrete. I'm like, this is the time that people want to uh, restructure their house. They want to restructure their lawns, uh, their gardens. That's what we want to focus on, not the snow removal, right? And they also know, a lot of clients know that their audience, they don't get business for certain things in, you know, in certain time duration. And they don't want to focus on that they will clearly tell me that, okay, for the next six months, we are not going to talk about this. I'm like, perfect. It makes sense because you're not going to get any search volume. You're not going to get any results. It's just useless. So <clears throat> you always should be capable to understand their business and talk in their language. Because once you start doing that, it's very easy for them to put their trust because they're putting money. So you do paid ads, you have to be sure that you're using someone's money and they will ask the question, if I put my money, where's the result? What, what am I getting in my business? Because they're running a business. So even, I mean, if you do the same, you will be like, if I'm putting $10,000, uh, you know, every two months, what am I getting? What is my return of investment? So you always have to give a good reason. You always have to be logical and be very careful with what you're doing in ads. And, you know, it's all technical. It's, it's, I think it's not a lot of technical, but a lot of uh, good strategy. My, my core has always been a good strategy. If I, I don't feel confident with my strategy, I'll create something else. I want to move on to, plan B because I'm not, I'm not sure because I'm, I want to put money and they need to see, you know, return on ad spend. Now, uh, PPC search and display 
I, I, I think you all know about the Google Display Network, right? Um, I, whenever I create campaigns on search and uh, I, I have the option of doing ads on search networks, the search partners and the Google Display partners. Now, usually I used to, you know, select them. Okay, if I'm doing search ads, I'll also do the Google search, uh, Google display networks. I'll also do Google search partners. I'll just put my ads everywhere, not just on the search engine, but also on different websites uh, where they can see my ads. But then it's not necessary that your audience will be there. Again, it comes down to the audience. Uh, I'm not getting any results from the GDNs and I think I should turn that off because my budget is going in a direction which is not leading any results. That's what I, I don't want to say I do optimization in SEO only. You always keep on optimizing PPC as well. Always. You cannot just start a campaign. You set up everything. You put the keywords. You have the ads running. And you shut it off. Like you don't want to see it. You want to move on to another client and you leave it for like two months. You don't, you don't even open it. And you know, you will think that, okay, Google will optimize it itself. It never, it never works like that. Even in, you know, in Instagram ads or uh, Facebook ads or any, any sort of ads, you have to keep on optimizing. I use tons of, I, I, I use a lot of keywords for a lot of ad groups. Not all my keywords work. I feel that, okay, I don't want people to search for this. If you, you know, if you see I have keywords and then people are searching for this and they see my ads and I'm like, no, I don't want this audience. I can just put them in the negative keywords. You know, that's the optimization that you, I do an optimization every two weeks. So I have to, because I want to give the campaign some time to gather the results, right? You just don't want to do a campaign and after two days, you'll come back and you'll cry about the result being not there. You, you always want to give some time to the, you know, to the algorithm to work. Uh, usually any platforms, the algorithm takes a lot of time. Now, based on a lot of metrics, uh, if your website is there, your page is there, your uh, content is weird, Sometimes algorithm will take a lot of time to read it, to put it out in front of the audience. So I have, you know, based on my strategies for the client, I decide how much time I want to give. I usually keep 15 days of gap between doing, a, you know, just a recheck. I'll just see if my campaigns are working. I'll see how are the bounce rate. I'll, I'll, I'll compare it. I'll, I'll keep on comparing it. And uh, if I see that it dropped, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll find a reason. Why did it drop? Did my ads got disapproved? Because a lot of time, nowadays the policies are getting so difficult and so niche that you have to be very sure with what you're writing, what you're targeting, uh, what kind of keyword you're using, uh, what does your website say? A lot of things matters now, and uh, you have to be careful. I'm not asking you to go and read the entire advertising policy, but whenever you do ads for, let's say, real estate, you know your client is real estate client. You must read the policies for real estate. It makes more sense rather than just ignoring it and uh, you know doing ads, and then all of your ads got disappeared. And, and you wasted your time. You wasted, you know, the amount of days that could have got you business and like millions of dollars of business. So you want to be, that comes under the strategy side that you read the policy and you know that, okay, uh, Google doesn't want you to target anyone with this income or they don't want to target directly. Uh, they don't want us to write anything that says sales or uh, you know home for sale they don't want us to write that so you once you read that you know it and you will not include that in your ads or the entire setup process and uh, you know that helps you you will you'll realize that okay i think now i know the policy and i can i can abide by the policy and your ads will not get disapproved uh, it, it's a major thing that you have to take care of 
uh, not just in real estate, I just gave an example, but any, any industry that you work with. Fine, fine. So meanwhile, let's take some questions. Eh? Taxi. Yeah. Let's, 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 there's one question from Mukta, which is better for career, SEO or PPC? Uh, that's a good question. I get that a lot. Uh, you know, there's a thin line. People think there's a thin line between SEO and PPC. They don't really understand the difference. Uh, in terms of career, if what that's what you want to know, I think it depends on you. Now, if you have done SEO, you know that it's about optimizing the search engine. It's about optimizing your website. It's about, you know, trying to make it better every day try to make it, you have to work with IT companies. You have, I mean, the IT departments, you will need help from other people. Let's say you have content writers in your company and you'll be like, I think this blog, the keywords that you're using is not giving us the ranking. Can you please change the content that you're writing? So you will constantly be working with those people. You have to keep on optimizing it. And it's a little bit of a backend. It's not too technical. It's not, you don't have to be master in coding. You don't have to, because that's what, you know, you'll have the web developments. So you'll have web development guys, they will take care of coding unless you already know coding and you're doing it for the company. So when you have SEO, you're looking into keywords, you're looking into your own website. You're like, okay, my website is loading. It's taking a lot of time. Why is it? because the images that you've put are heavy in resolutions. So you will tell the client that, you know what, this picture is in JPEG. Why don't you put it in uh, .webp? Because that will allow your website to run fast. That's, that's the thing that you'll be doing. Whereas as a PPC side, it's about running ads. It's about you know doing a campaign, putting the budget, uh, making a making a strategy, having a lot of numbers. If you know how you can depict those numbers, how you can decode those numbers, because if I see I have a lot of impression but I don't have clicks, I I need to know why. Am I not conveying my message? Am I not targeting the right audience? I am getting impression, which is good, but why am I not getting clicks? Is it is, is the need of that service not required at this time? You know, there is a lot of data that you have to play around with. And it's it's really, if, if you're interested in, you know, uh, I always keep on challenging myself. I have so many industrial clients, like so many different industries. I And every time uh, if I see something like the impression shares have gone down, I will get into it. I will investigate and that's, you know, I want to know why. I want to know how that happened. I want to know when that happened so that I don't repeat the same thing next year or next month. I'll be like, oh, I thought this keyword is the best. You have it on the website. You do the services, but that keyword is costing you a huge amount of money. How can you use the same keyword, but also not pay too much? I think you should optimize the ads. So I run down to the ad side and I wanna keep it more efficient and more consistent and something which is easy for Google algorithm to you know, uh, reach out to. So it's more about investigating, it's more about numbers, it's more about doing, uh, you know, putting some money also. It's it's a lot of numbers. Frankly, it's a lot of numbers. Sometimes I feel, how did I end up in this? Because it's, it's so much of numbers, I never thought that I'll be, it feels like you're a nerd, but you're not a nerd. Uh, it's something you like to do, I think. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And I think- yeah, I hope. <laughs> and I think, you know, yeah. one uh, one should be doing is like one should be closing, you know, you can close your eyes and ask yourself like which excites you the most. So is it, you know, search in operation I, that, uh, you know, that is exciting you or is it PPC yeah. probably? But yeah, that's the thing I told about, you know, in the beginning that digital marketing allows you to get the experience. Uh, and if you think that it's not working for you, you can try something else, you know. Yeah, and if you think that today I'm doing PPC, I know how to do ads on Facebook, right? 
and that excites me a lot and i'm like oh my god i want to just stick to facebook i want to just stick to like i mean social media and i just want to do social media marketing i can shift there i can shift you will the plus point is you will have knowledge about ppc uh-huh. or whatever you're leaving behind and it will be helpful everything is connected Absolutely. in digital marketing everything you cannot do ppc without social you cannot Absolutely. do uh you know seo without yeah, content without writing content. very true very true and sometimes you know yeah. we we when we run campaign we also optimize so sometimes i'll tell you google my business data that you are saying in google my business it helps you to optimize google ads as well so there are also different platform absolutely you said correctly so if you have a good knowledge probably you know social media also going to help you for optimizing as you part as well because when yeah. you when you go to keyword planner when you see what people are searching then you can identify okay these are the search queries yeah on top of funnel or bottom of so we we get lot of information that's amazing eh? let yeah. us take another something uh, yes yeah, sorry something i just want to add so every time i get a client a potential client not a client they they have a question right what should i be doing should i be doing social media Uh, or let's say they they are sure that they want to do facebook ads and they want to do ppc hmm. now they don't know how much money they want to put in that they have their marketing budget they don't know how much budget they should be giving for social media and for facebook so what i do i run a forecast hmm. now for for people who don't know what forecast is if you go on the keyword planner and you do oh, add keywords uh you can put their website domain and then you can you can think of the keywords that they could be you know people could be searching for it you make a list and then you'll see a forecast result that forecast result shows you in several years or in this time if you put 1000 dollars a month oh. this is the click through rate you're going to get and that is the forecast i give to the client and then they know okay i think they they were saying that they want to put 2000 but let's say 1500 gives them the exact result then why do i want my client to spend 500 extra so you always you know keep on doing that forecast you can do a forecast on facebook uh, for instagram as well i can do forecast on linkedin uh, you just uh, create a campaign and uh, you don't have to run the campaign you don't have to put ads in it you just create a campaign you add uh, you know target location the the audience that you want and you will see an estimated results and that estimated result is really important for uh, the clients because they get an idea that okay if i spend 1500 this is what i'm going to get this is like a basic answer for them if they have to give it to the management or a, you know uh, within their company if they want to discuss this out so yeah this is a be- really a good practice to do before getting a client and absolutely yes so if you don't have forecasting data you you will never be able to optimize it as well so this is important let us take one yeah. more question before we go ahead there's one also question we have one. hasan 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 has very few questions hasan now so hasan you can go ahead hasan go ahead hasan go ahead go ahead Hasan, go ahead. Go ahead, Hasan. So let us read the question. Eh? What is asking? Yeah, I I have a question where Hasan says uh-huh. that uh, if he was able to land an interview with one startup company based in North America, which happens to be in the restaurant business. Uh, so question is, when it comes to the growth of a page or an account, what are the major aspects? which attracts customer or page especially in north america i think uh, let's say if we are talking about social media page uh, because it's a restaurant as i said and uh, they want to come in a business they want to be uh, they want to be seen i think my i wouldn't say mantra it's a strategy that i use is uh, having consistent content having uh, i cannot just post random stuff on my business page i want to have a consistent content all over my page so if anyone comes on it and if they see my profile 
they will see the consistency in the message. They will see the consistency in the approach that I'm putting. And they will see the kind of, uh, you know, the content that I'm creating. I want to create community over there. So what I would do if I'm a new company, if I'm a restaurant, I just open a cafe or a pub or a bar, whatever. Uh, I want to have engagement. I want to have people talking about my restaurant. So I will create two-way communication kind of post. I want to have people commenting in, in the post. I want to have people responding to my story. I will you, you should get a lot of mentions. So if you have new customers coming in, you should tell them that, okay, why don't you go on my Instagram page? Or if you like the food, why don't you put up a story and mention it? When you get a lot of mentions, when you get a lot of clicks organically, the algorithm automatically pushes you at the top. You don't have to do anything. That is the organic side. If you keep it consistent, those are the key metrics that you always keep in mind if it's your uh, social media page that you want to be, you know, as easy for anyone to come to your page and see what you do. Uh, in terms of, yeah, that was the, you know, major pages kind of thing. Uh, there's another question, how different virtual restaurants are in North America compared to what we have in India and what are their key strategy to go? Well, I think um, engagement is a key factor for uh, uh, you know, restaurants here. They do a lot of posts. They do a lot of stories. They mention, they tag. Uh, this is like the basics for anyone doing social media. You want to have good hashtags. You want to have uh, good mentions and tags. I think more of it is showing the customer what you do and uh, you know, giving them a glimpse of, uh, oh, this is the dish that you get in this restaurant. This looks delicious from the picture itself. So the image should be uh, kind of attractive enough for anyone to see and be like, okay, because the other day when I was looking for a restaurant myself, and I know because I'm new to the city, I just moved from Toronto. So uh, I, I want to know what cafes I would be going, which provides me good vegan options. Right. So I know Instagram is not the place to look for that. But then I also have been following a few cafes. So I would just open the restaurant and I'll just scroll and see the pictures of the dishes that they have. And if they're attractive enough, I would definitely go there. You know, they would they don't have to keep over here. People don't just, you know, put offers out there. They don't put 20 percent off, 30 percent off. Uh, they want to be authentic because they are giving you a quality thing. And if they're giving quality, they don't want to be cheap. And you would know it once you go there, once you try, once you experience it, and then you will realize this was worth the money. It's, it's you know, it's, uh, it, this is something that is, which is obvious. So, yeah. We have one more question, Hitakshi. That is how to write to creative ads in PPC. That's a good question because uh, I don't know how many of you know, but from June 2020, uh, the expanded text ads are going away. So on PPC, all you have are two types of ads that you can do. One is responsive ads and one is the dynamic ads. So you'll have to say goodbye to the expanded ads where you used to just write the ad and when people click, it will expand and it'll give more options, right? That is going away. So now all you have is a responsive ads. Now responsive ads are so good because in spite of writing three different ads, you can combine everything in just one ad. You, for, for people who don't know what responsive ads is, uh, you have multiple headlines that you write. You have four different description that you can give. 
you can have uh, you know uh, the site links call extensions whatever you want at and then you create the ad simple but what google does google will optimize it so if i am looking for something it will not show me the entire ad it will only show me few headlines out of it one or two descriptions out of it whatever is best for the viewer it will show that it will optimize it by itself the algorithm has become so good that it optimizes the ads by itself it will show only the headline that is more relevant for the audience so you can play around with the headlines now when you play around with the headlines you want to make sure that you include all your keywords if not all i would say majority of the keywords in the headlines uh, <clears throat> you still have 34 characters so you cannot write a long headlines and there are like tons of headlines that you have to give uh, around 18 it's optional but it's the best uh, practice that you put a lot of headlines because you don't know who's who's more you know who, what what is more related to what person so you want to try different headlines and then the description and google will kind of pick the best headline pick the best description and will show it to the customer now responsive ads are really good but there is dynamic ads as well so i would say it's not about it it is about definitely about the creativity of how you write the ads but now it has become so easy to write the ads like you wouldn't take a lot of time if you come on the page where you have to create ads <clears throat> you will see what strength that ad has google show you the strength of the ad so you always want to keep something between good and excellent or you can have something average but then you want to optimize that you cannot have something poor um uh, that's the you know um uh, key points in the strength of the ads so it gives you options it gives you recommendations while you're creating the ad be like make your headline unique and you click on it and you'll have a lot of options that google gives you while creating the ad you can add you know find more or visit us today or you know exclusive deals these are like the unique headlines that your website might not have but you want to keep it on your ads so that's the creative side of you know making the ads but it's it's so pretty easy considering that i have responsive ads uh, responsive ads now because initially when you create a campaign then you have the ad group now for each ad group you might be creating three different ads or two different ads but now you can only have one single ad and then you can combine everything together nice 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 because it's all about you know we need to do lot of research as well before we start writing ad copy yeah and a lot uh yes because we need to see what what someone is searching and what are their top intentions because people will click on your ad if it matches with the intention not with the keyword eh? so this that's is that's true this is just a misconception so so it's all about changing intentions absolutely yeah yes. yeah and any any software yeah. you use for you know uh, for finding uh, you know ad copies or working on uh, page top softwares that you use on daily basis yeah. the only software that i use on daily basis is scm rush uh, i love scm rush because uh-huh. i find everything on that uh, i can have the, the the insights on my domain my website i can see what my competitor website is doing what keywords they are putting in not for just ads but just to have seo for them uh and you know i can have the keyword magic tool over there i can find a list of keywords and uh that gives in depth information and insight of the industry that i'm trying to market and it helps a lot but i think the more you get into it the more you'll realize that no you don't need these tools every time so these tools are helpful for sure but they're not free first of all uh, <laughs> you pay a lot of money <laughs> to get these tools and every person i think in this room has once typed in free tools for seo <laughs> or free, free tools for <laughs> doing google ads <laughs> I, i i have done that. 
<laughs> and I know I think everyone has done that, which is okay. But no, you're not gonna get free tools. Uh, <laughs> so my company pays for SCM Rush. <laughs> I just use that, which is really good. Uh, but I think a lot of uh, I think uh, HubSpot is one we can use for scheduling the social posts. Uh, that is really good. You have multiple uh, platforms that you can uh, include. And uh, in terms of keyword research, as I said, I use the SEM Rush. I'm a bit old school. I want to I want to stick to the roots as well. So I I go on the websites of my client and I go on the website of my competitor clients. If you don't know who the competitors are, you can just ask the client. You'd be like, okay, what do you think in the city are your competitors? Who do you think that could be new to the industry or something? So once I have the list of competitors, I'll go on their website. I'll I'll just browse. I'll just see what kind of messaging they're doing and you know what products are they uh, selling. And then I'll come back to Google. And then while creating the ads, I can have the keyword planner. The key- keyword planner also provides a lot of information. So. <laughs> That's there. And once you have created the campaign, it's been 15 days. Um, when you open Google Ads, you see recommendations. And under recommendations, you see add new keywords and Google will provide you new keywords. You don't have to add all of them. Please don't do that. Not all keywords are important. <laughs> uh-huh. Be very sure with what you're doing because uh, you have to bid for these keywords. The keywords could bring unnecessary traffic, which you don't want. Uh, The keywords could be irrelevant to your business. Uh, You don't want that. And then the kind of keywords, the type that you use, like the phrase match or the broad match. Uh, Sometimes I use exact match because I want to have exactly my company's name as a keyword. I don't want anything else. So I'll just use exact match. I'll use... uh, exact match for specific product that they're selling. So if they have elevators, I'll just put exact exact match and put elevators in it, right? So you have to be very sure with, you don't have to create tons of keywords. You don't have to go with 20 keywords for just one single ad group because the way I create strategy is already uh, very organized. So if I'm talking about one particular product or service, I want to stick to it. I don't want 20 or 30 keywords in my ad group with my ads. You want to have something very niche. You want to have something very much filtered and, you know, really targeted directly to the website, which is relevant. And again, you have to keep on optimizing it. Even if you have the best keywords, there is no assurance that all of them are going to work. You will see a red uh, text saying that low search volume. What am I going to do? I don't want to run that keyword. Or maybe the search volume is less on exact match. So I will turn it to the broad match and then it'll it'll be gone. So, you know, these are the minor things. And I think that you will learn once you get into it. You cannot learn that overnight. You cannot learn that in one day or in one course. You have to keep on practicing it, practicing it. It's just, you need to know the base of it. Yeah. I guess Pushkar, you want to ask something? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, hi, Dr. Side. Uh, hi. So my question is kind of uh, very uh, simple and uh, So uh, we run a company here, Uh, uh, we recently founded, recently started, and Mm -hmm. uh, while we talk clients, so they come up with, uh, uh, they they come up with to us and they say that we want to run a Google ad or or we want to do PPC. So, uh, you know, I just want to know what what should be the ground zero strategy. Uh, You know, building a, building up audience for them and then uh, working on it, or how do you, mm -hmm. What strategies do you use in in case of such kind of uh, you know projects coming to you? So I believe you have a digital marketing agency or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, so if a client comes up to me and says that they want to run ads, 
and they are just starting or we are just starting with them client i just want to see everything is set what i mean is their website is okay i want to see the content on the website is doing good uh if not i would want them to pause their thought on ppc for a minute and focus on their website because that's where the traffic will be going that's where the google will be getting the algorithm that's where the crawlers of google will be going and looking for the content right i want the content to be really good i want the website to be running really fast if there are major changes if they think that they want a new website and it takes time right so i don't want them to run any ads for now i want them to do the website first and then you start the ads again another thing that i want them to do could be uh i think have the conversions so uh sometimes the clients have a website really good website but they don't have any conversion like call to action they just have contact us there is just one number in there but that can get you leads but what else can get you leads how do you get leads in your company you should ask them how do you get potential customers how do they reach out to you do you want them to fill up a form like a contact us form like putting email address you know writing a small message if required the first name last name if it's a b2b you can have them write a company name whatever like a location or something that's a form that you put in a contact us page so if they don't have that you can ask them to create that you can ask them to create a form another thing i always ask is a landing page so if they want to talk about a particular product okay and they don't have a landing page the website is good they have the contact us form they have call to actions but they don't have a lot of information about that product that i'm going to market i would ask them to add that first so i think those are the basics that you can have a conversation with uh <clears throat> while talking to a client on a very initial phase there are a lot of questions that you should ask like what value do you provide to your customers what do you think is your uh, kpis are what do you think your competitors are uh, what do you think your audience is where is it and then once you have those answers then you'll know you will automatically know that if they need to do ppc or not sometimes a client can start with social media presence and then they can have a ppc you don't can you should not just jump into it but i think <clears throat> there are just some basics that you can clear it out first with the client uh based on the <clears throat> sorry based on the website and then you know you can move forward i hope that answers your question right right all right yeah thanks thanks so much yes yes so sure. any other query quickly <clears throat> so fine i guess i guess vishwa We don't have any queries of now. So we don't have. Fine, 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 fine. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So let us take final queries. Eh? Go ahead, go ahead, guys. If you have any query, let's put quickly. So I think. So we are just waiting, eh? But it's all about yeah. optimization. That's why you know. we speak about this you we're going to have search engine optimization you talk about That's ppc true. it's going to be ppc optimization email optimization ctr optimization landing page optimization so it's all about optimizing yeah this is you call, we call it we call it optimization in our language right but it's all about learning from the mistake uh, you put a wrong keyword and you see it's not working it's your mistake you you I, change it absolutely yes, and you said you said you said one thing correct eh? uh, which is you know a lot of people they say that they'll put money they'll start their campaign on google ads and then they want that everything should happen by its own and they should be making yeah. money out of it now the point is google can make you know a good campaign google can make it better because google wants you to spend a lot of money into it because the yeah. more you spend the more money google will make and google want to yeah. make sure that once you spend money you should get profitable other way but the fact yeah. is if you have a bad campaign now no ai system can make it better that is yeah that is important <laughs> that's why that's why yes and that's that's how ai uh, gets into it so a lot of misconception as so it's not about starting a campaign again it's, it's all about optimizing it absolutely yes 
and lot of lot of take away yeah. lot of lot of take away let us see someone wants to ask a question i guess maybe yeah, sure. go ahead go ahead mukta go ahead you want to speak something please go ahead Um, when you design some campaign or optimize, sometimes it happens that data is giving you one picture, and you feel like your gut feeling is saying something else, or might be a little uh, way apart, like different things. So, what do you follow the most? Completely data thing, or sometimes little mix of your gut feeling? I think data never lies. <laughs> data <laughs> never, data never lies. You can be wrong with your gut feeling. <laughs> data, I think it's 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 about the approach. So let's say I create some ads on Facebook. I have a creative which is good. I think of a design. Everything is fine, and I think people will be uh, filling up the form, but. Usually, people are just looking at the ads and they're not clicking on it, right? And for for PPC as well, if I'm writing an ad, I can I can write the best keywords. I can write anything fancy. I can write something unique. I can write something exciting. But then people are not clicking on it. So data will show you that. And I think if you know how to interpret that. you should definitely definitely rely on data and sometimes also on what the client is saying because at the same time uh it's surprising for clients as well they they have come up to me and be like oh we've got a lot of business this time and i'm like no not from google ads you must have got it from somewhere uh for sure but not from here and then it's the opposite as well i have got a lot of leads i've got a lot of of course literally million dollars of conversion value to the client and they will complain that they did not get the customer they did not get the business i have the data to show that they were a customer this is the audience they clicked it when you have data you can you can literally prove the other person wrong and be like okay this is what data says there could be a problem on the back end of something right but i think you should you should definitely rely on data and and next thing is you know you should know like from where to get the data and what data you are measuring <laughs> is again important <laughs> yeah there are a lot of, lot of yes Thank there are a lot of matrices which are available and sometimes probably you know you you are talking about one data but probably that might not be the right data for that specific specific campaign so if you talk about google ads you see straight from you know first page bid amount to ctr there are a lot of data coming into it straight from yeah. history quality score to current quality score but you should you should be identifying it so probably you know it's again that, important that's true data that's true like part. yeah that's true like let's say you get like 1000 clicks on the ads okay but your bounce rate is 90% <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean that just means that people are clicking on ads but when they go on the website they don't find that what they're looking for so they just jump back and that increases the bounce rate that means 90% of the time uh you know people are just leaving your website that means no business your click through rate will be high uh -huh. and you'll be like yes we're doing good we have a good above the benchmark industrial benchmark click through rate but then look at your bounce rate <laughs> Or look at your search term report, and then you will identify. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nice, that nice, is nice. True. And Itashi, what about what do you think about lookalike audiences? Because uh, we have been trying a lot of look lookalike audiences with our students and for clients as well. So, what do you think about lookalike uh, audience specifically on uh, let's talk about Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter? So, what do you think? Uh, Lookalike audience is a tricky one. I think uh, could be a little tricky if you're targeting certain audience and you 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 want a lookalike audience. I always go for remarketing on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I there are rarely times when I try lookalike audience because I have already targeted my audience. I have mentioned everything that I want in my campaign. I have my target location. I have the interest of the uh, you know uh, an audience, and I know what people I am targeting. I have added everything that I want. If I go and do look alike, it will give you broad results for sure because you are having a lot of bigger audience. 
but you don't know the look alike audience is relevant to you or not i know the audience that i targeted is relevant i have a control over it the look alike audience you're just selecting look alike audience you don't know what exactly the audience are going to be it's not a bad thing i think if you're doing a brand awareness campaign or oh, if you really want if you really want eyes on your page or something i think look alike could be an option but uh, i wouldn't rely on it when i'm putting a big budget absolutely yes because for that you need to have a retargeting audience eh? yes so, so have- when i do when i do retargeting i can also do retargeting on uh, i think i do that on uh, linkedin where i can retarget anyone who has clicked on my ads previously so that is a good option to do like then the retargeting ads would be different right i'll create different creatives i'll mm-hmm. have a different message to it like Absolutely. few days remaining for sale or few days this is your last chance to buy something this is a retargeting message so right. i think you can do that rather than uh, going for just i think going for a bigger audience that you don't have the control on nice nice Pro- probably we can test it so again optimization and testing is required yes and for some yes. campaign you know, yes yes, yes. <laughs> some audiences are working so probably optimization is again very important because i tell you uh, a lot of uh, you know experienced people have met in last you know four five years or six years now they do have different yep. different opinions because it again depends about the product it depends upon our creative it depends upon communication it, it it's a mixed combination eh? so it so is a mixed paid combination ad, for paid ad everything has to be good at least eh? if not better it has to it has to be good i think you can never be best at it uh, uh but it's always about i i like that that's the part that you know keeps you exciting like you don't have that's what i said like you don't forget about the campaign you're keeping an eye on it and you you keep on optimizing it and you know for different clients that i i i have the opportunity to work with multiple industrial clients like multiple different industry clients and you learn a lot about those clients that's the best part that you learn about businesses you learn about because i am i mostly a, you know have a business mindset so i i want to learn about different business i want to learn about real estate i want to learn about you know the, the companies that are here like the industrial companies i have i work with the law firms and the financial institution there is a client that which is a trading client which is stock trading client that we have and also when you optimize it so let's say you have clients and then sometimes the clients are like my audience is in uk my audience is in uh, us or you know somewhere else you run ads but you cannot uh run ads exactly the same the way you do in your country so if i'm running ads for a different location their policies are different in us there are a lot of restrictions on real estate hmm. ads uh in uk you cannot you can do ads on financial services but you will have to fill up a form and then you have to send it over you have to request them they will go through it they will send you the approval and then you can do the ads so when you start do working with multiple industries you get this kind of knowledge nice they said how do you cope up with stress eh? because i guess <laughs> in an agency adapting ppc because i'll tell you that SEO is okay, probably you know client. Let me just give us some time yeah. because you know I've seen with a lot of agencies we give some time to client and then probably you yes. know keep client on hold for at least thirty days. But PPC, this is not the scenario because once someone <laughs> started money into it, they will start you know giving you call because um, every day the money is. We is call money. it. Uh, we call it the anxiety period uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first three months are always the anxiety period because you are building up something uh, but i think it's more for the seo side uh, i would say rather than the ppc side. ppt the ppc gets you result it it takes time to set up but like 15 20 days max uh if you are having graphics and everything if you're working with multiple teams i think it takes 15 to 20 days but when you're doing seo when you are creating content for them 
SEO is the organic way of getting the results. So it's like you're gradually increasing. And when you're gradually increasing, the company is putting money, they will not see what you're doing. They will be like, what, what's SEO? What are you doing? On, you know, you, uh, where's the result? Why am I not, not getting the business? But the objective of SEO is to build the business online gradually. And it's a long-term results that they will get. They will definitely get. They will be on the top of the page for the longest of the time because it's organic. organic. Whereas for ads, I create a campaign, I do everything, and then boom, the campaign is on. In in a month or so, I'll 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 get like all the results, right? So uh, having client stay calm is okay for PPC, <laughs> but it's still an anxiety period. But I'll still tell you, you're talking about a scenario when you have a very good graphics de graphic designer and a developer and a good content writer working around with you. Think of a situation when you don't have good people around you. You're not good yeah. with graphics. You're not good with landing page. Then probably it, PPC will be suicidal. Eh? <laughs> it, it, it becomes really difficult, right? So the way I, I, I work with the graphic designing team, they're in US right now. So I create a design board for them. I create the description. I create like a brief for them for what I am looking into. So I don't do the graphic design. Uh, but I create a brief. I, I give them the idea of the colors that they should use, the design that they should use. I give them the inspiration in the uh, brief. And then I have to wait for a day and then I get the designs and there are changes that I have to make. Sometimes I have to make the changes by myself, right? So I think you have to be ready with those kind of situation for SEO. Let's say the content writing is not done. The blog is not ready. What are you going to put on the website? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's obviously about the, having a good team, but also being capable enough to do it. Like I have been doing graphic designing on Canva, which is like the basics, but it's the best tool, you know, you can use to learn graphic designing. I've been using that for seven years now. Wow. So <laughs> Canva is so good that if I have a graphic design, if I want to create something, I can just create it right away and just start my campaign if I don't have to wait. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. And which books do you read, uh, you know, in order to keep keeping you updated about this? So any book, any I, blog? I, I think I read a lot of industrial blogs. Uh, majorly, I want to keep up with the industry, just see what's coming up. Like, you know, uh, looking at the Google algorithm that they're announcing to stop, uh, you know, expanded text ads. And then from for, for the next year, the update is that they are going to make changes in the analytics side. They are doing the G4A. So... I want to be updated. So I'll just read the experience of people. I'll watch some YouTube videos of, uh, you know, people doing ads on TikTok or people doing ads on somewhere just to uh, keep up with it. But I think I also do a lot of online course because as I said, it's free. <laughs> you can you can learn. <laughs> and it's, a, it's interesting. It's not boring. It's not like one or two hours. If you go on... Uh, there is a course on Twitter, which is Twitter flight, right. Twitter flight learning. You, you learn about Twitter ads and then there are a lot of course on LinkedIn learnings. So you keep on learning things. You keep on talking to people. I like talking to people. I like talking and getting knowledge out of it. Uh, I have a good team of content writers, social media marketers, uh, SEO people. And, you know, I, I tend to, think I try to listen to their perspective of a client like what are they doing what do, what do they think of a strategy so when you when you talk to them you will get to know if, if you're doing SEO trust me you should talk to someone else who's doing SEO hmm. you should always bring up this point be like okay I was thinking of doing this what do you think you'll get so many insights that you know you might be missing out but yeah very true. That's why I keep on updating myself. Let me tell you, this is the funda, you know, that if you want to earn more, if you want to be confident, yeah. <laughs> if you want to have a good life, you have to learn every day. This is so, That's so important. Cool. Is, yes, and digital is evolving. Eh? So meditation, yeah. somebody is saying. <laughs> meditation for <meditation. people's> stress. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'll but, try. <laughs> but, but that is also. I, I just. I think I just go to gym. I, I work out every day. So that's that's my stress buster. 
Nice, nice. Because it has to be, and then we need to work from within as well. Because I'll tell yes. you, yes. if you have a very good skill set, if you're a good you know, let's say communication, or if you're very good with analytics path, next thing which is very important is how you keep yourself, you know, calm. Mm -hmm. and yeah, important, that's important true. Is how you decide, I think, uh, I think the, the more organized you stay with the process, uh, you should have your own process. If your boss comes up and gives you a, a process of you know your job and if you think that you can have something of your own try to have something of your own try to create a process i always having so many clients at once could be overwhelming so i think i keep it a little organized i keep it in a very straightforward way that i don't stress myself i have a good process that i've made it for myself to you know, check in with the clients, to check in on the platforms, you know, make some changes, new create new creatives. It's just something that everyone has a different process, and you should try to find that process. If you're working with a lot of clients, if you're if you're a business and you have to deal with all the clients, you cannot just call them up on single day and just talk to them at a, at once. So just have your own process. And I think that will give you a good clarity about how to work in a very efficient way. Nice, nice, nice. And final question, because we are already done with one and a half hour. Uh, oh, <laughs> I did not see the time. <laughs> uh, so the point is uh, three things, you know, you will uh, you will suggest students, you know, so that they will be more motivated. They can be more motivated. They can be more confident because they all want to, you know, Either they want to start their own agency or they want they are looking for a job in digital marketing or they want to work as a freelancer. Three important tips you want to give it to, the, to our students. Yes. I think uh, I think the first is obviously be consistent. Uh, obviously, once you start being consistent with what, what you're really doing, uh, it gives you a lot of idea. It, it gives you a sense of what you're supposed to do next. Uh, you'll automatically get that once you start having your own process. Once you once you know that this is the this is the way that I am going. This is this is the next step. It gives you confidence. Uh, and being consistent is difficult. <laughs> it's not easy. You get distracted very easily. You get uh, uh, you get lazy. You can procrastinate a lot. But <laughs> you have to be consistent. You cannot get you know success, or you cannot just stay interested in something if you're not consistent. And uh, thing second is uh, keep on learning; like it never stops. Uh, I I am a person who who wanted to get done with my education as soon as possible. <laughs> uh, Twenty four year of my life, I just did my education, but my learning doesn't stop. Right. Even today, I'm learning. I talk to people. Find your own way of learning things. You can read a book. You can you can watch some really good documentary or podcast or or YouTube videos. Uh, learn about your field. Learn about industries all over. There's a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of things that you don't know. Don't know about crypto. You don't know about NFTs. Learn about it. Uh, there is there's no restriction to it right so when there is no restriction you can just keep on going and learn and you'll find something which interests you and uh, if if you think that you already know that you're interested in seo i think you have a lot of things to learn about seo keep on you know polishing 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 your skills so you know keep on learning and then i think don't be afraid to make the mistakes don't be like, I, I get it that if you're creating a campaign, if you are uh, posting something, if you have made a creative and you're afraid, you're like, I don't know what the client will say. I don't know if they will approve. I don't know if the content that I'm writing is good enough. I don't know if the English in that is okay. Uh, you'll have a lot of questions, but it's okay. You, you'll, just, you'll just go and do the campaign and it's fine. You'll learn and you'll optimize it. And, you know, uh, I get stressed a lot of times when uh, I mess up. But the one thing that, you know, you should remember, you're not doctors. You're not killing someone. It's, it's okay. It's okay to make those mistakes, right? And 
you can change it you can optimize it you can learn from it don't forget to learn out of it so i think those are three things but yeah think that helps anyone <laughs> but if if you know if any time if anyone has any question you guys can reach out to me on linkedin or anywhere nice you can also share we'll also share your instagram profile as well we'll do that so i request everyone to please start your camera so that we'll take selfie and put it on instagram <laughs> you said it's all about mentioning eh? this is important so that let's start true. let's start give it up and you know one thing i still remember jo mai jo mujhe lagta hai which is really very important which is taking action eh? at least try to make your first mistake eh? which is yeah. important and make yeah. mistakes on consistent basis but don't repeat it so let's say you are yeah. doing 10 mistakes so make sure one once you are doing your first mistake make sure that you don't repeat it but try to you know do some unique mistake or new mistake this is important let's take selfie eh? so i request everyone to start your selfie also and so then, patience is the key <laughs> and as you said really which is consistency is important there eh? because this happens because you have to when you have to take action this is something very important and you know when you need to take action let it be any kind of field when you take action uh and then you'll understand what to do what not to do and how to do it so when you have a very strong weapon in front of you like knowledge if you're learning I'll, and i i'll tell you that you'll find the solution someone will come yeah. to you and it happens it anche sometimes it happens you know that we are stuck in some problem and someone comes to me like an avatar and they will help you surely they will help you. <laughs> this this happens eh? so let yeah. us let us start your camera we'll take selfie yeah. and what i want i want everyone to put mention us talk about this it takes a lot of effort a lot of time do share the feedback guys if this yeah, session yeah, yeah. was helpful like there's a lot of things that i've covered and a so lot of things for you to take but <laughs> but yeah i i bet go ahead go yes go ahead go ahead let's start your camera i want to make sure that everyone is starting and itanchi can you please put your instagram in chat and in chat so that we'll um, click we'll share it sharing is caring this is yes, so important i will and it is not public so guys <laughs> i know i have a lot of request <laughs> no problem and this is okay, give me a second and we'll tag and so you can also put your instagram so we'll also tag you as well no for so, sure for sure yeah, yeah so everyone everyone each one of you please put your instagram handle we'll tag each and every one of you and let us take a have selfie so vishwa will take a selfie you will take a selfie nice nice go ahead go ahead go ahead nice nice so we'll get the chat let us take a selfie let's say and... please <laughs> and i'll also put the linkedin id just in case anyone wants you know any help nice nice all done let's have a thumbs up as well so we can have two three poses <laughs> Let's have yes, yes, good, good, good. That's that's nice. So then we put it in stories and fine. So thanks a lot, uh, Hitanshi. It was pleasure having you here. Same and I know that you know that. knowledge is important. Probably for me, it was again very important session because a lot of takeaways for me as well. That's and true. I'm very sure each one of you, आपने काफी सारा चीजें आप समझा होगा. And probably I'm I was seeing you know some of. you also making pointers and all so which is really very important get in touch with itanshi on linkedin as well we'll also tag you on instagram but you know thank you for for everyone mm-hmm. for spending time so it's not one and a half hour probably 50 hours because 50 people they have joined this so. <laughs> that that no it was really my pleasure talking about you know a lot of things uh, in this session and i i really like the questions that you guys have asked and I wish you guys good luck for anyone who's starting the career or anyone who's already doing really good. Keep it up, keep on going. Uh, you know, don't stop. And uh, I think you have a lot of opportunities. Just, just take it. <laughs> just have fun. Just enjoy. Fine, fine, fine. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Atakshi. Thank you everyone for your thank time. You so it was much. honor to host really this event. Nice, nice, nice. Have a great day. Thank you.
Fine, fine. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Dream big and take action. Eh? Thank you so much. <laughs> so, we'll end this session now. Thank you. Thank you, Itachi. Thank you.